Hello, my name's Yvonne and I'm going to show you how to create your very own still life painting. Here's the one I painted. To create yours, keep watching. So this is my workstation for my still life painting and I'm beside a window for natural light. If you don't have a good strong source of natural light, you can use a lamp. And of course, depending on how long um, you're going to take to paint your picture, you might need to have a lamp beside you for later on. So I've set up my still life with some of my equipment and I'll explain that um, to you now. So here is my palette, um, all the standard paints that you get in one pack of aqua oil paints um, and I've set them out as follows, yellow at the top and yellow and blue make green, red and blue make purple and red and yellow make orange and you get some white and a couple of browns um, and you can mix the browns and blues together to get greys and make your colours darker. So the next piece of equipment we'll have a look at is the brushes and I have a variety of shapes of brushes here from small pointed to large pointed to small flat to larger flat and a large um, all-purpose brush um, for blocking in larger areas. Um, these are all brushes that were purchased as part of a multi-pack and when you're beginning painting um, I would advise you to experiment with inexpensive options to start. Before I begin painting I always like to wet my brush, wipe off the excess on the lip of my water container and wipe off onto um, my um, excess paper. So here are some of the canvas options um, that you can paint on as a surface. This is the one I'll be using. It's a linen and it's clear primed so it comes ready primed. Prime is when the um, canvas has been treated um, so that the paint stays on the surface of the canvas rather than bleeding all the way through to the back. Um, here's another example that you can buy, um, an inexpensive option and it's been primed um, white uh, but I prefer the linen with the clear and that's what I'll be using. These are inexpensive, part of multi-pack and you can buy them online, they're readily available. So having selected a simple arrangement of objects, so for my composition I am simply using two items, a jug and an orange. The placement of these objects on my windowsill is important because I'm using the lines of where the window frame meets the windowsill and the wall meets the windowsill as a guide um, to my composition and I'm highlighting that here so that's where the wall meets the sill wall meets the sill and the window frame meets the sill and those three lines the two horizontal and the vertical just help my composition and I'll show you more about that as we start painting and a little bit about the ellipse at the top the ellipse is um, useful to bear in mind when you're painting um, because you will see more of the interior of the jug the lower the jug is to your eye line. The higher the jug is to your eye line, the less of the interior you'll see. So the oval shape will become narrower. If you were looking at it from above, of course it would be a complete circle. So now I'm ready to begin painting. I have my canvases, my brush, my paints, my still life is set up. Um, I can wet my brush, wipe it off a little bit to take away the excess water and begin to mix a simple colour to enable me to draw. So I'm using a small pointed, round pointed brush, gives me a lot of control to start to draw and, and block in um, the main components of my picture, which in this case are my jug and my orange 
and the three guiding lines of the windowsill which help with my placement and this arrangement of objects is called composition. And what I would like to do is place my jug in the majority of my picture. So I want my jug and my orange to take up most of the surface of the canvas and I need to bear that in mind when I'm drawing them in scale. So now I'm going to begin my drawing with paint and I'm going to use a small pointed brush to give me plenty of control with the paint and I'm going to mix the paint just a little bit of white maybe a bit of yellow ochre or burnt umber a little bit of brown or it could be blue and white whatever you think something a color that you're comfortable with to do your drawing you don't want it to be too garish because it'll confuse you when you start to paint in other colors so just a simple neutral color to start to paint and don't worry at this stage about too much um, detail in drawing you'll see that i'm just blocking in the main areas of the jug with the handle and the body of the jug and placing where the orange is going to go and my jug and my orange are taking up the majority of the surface of the canvas and here's me pointing in my three guiding lines of where the window frame meets the window sill and the window sill meets the wall and that is taking up the majority of the canvas the three shape three lines that we, we pointed out earlier this gives me a triangle form which is a classic pyramid composition so all the objects in the canvas fit inside a triangle so now I have my basic drawing plotted in um, and I've used a neutral um, color to paint in my, my sketch I can now begin to block in around it. Because I have focused my painting on just the jug and the orange, I don't have to paint in too much of the surrounding background. So now I'm taking one of my medium sized synthetic flat topped brushes, which is a brush I prefer you'll get to find out which brushes you prefer as you go along and get more experienced and I'm going to use this brush to mix up some paints and start to block in some of the um, colours around um, my jug and my orange and the, the items themselves so I've mixed up just um, some white to start filling in where the window frame is, the window sill and the wall. And the consistency of the paint is akin to double cream. So it's, or sing, thick single cream maybe. It's, it's not so thick that it's not spreadable and it's not so thin that it's going to run off the page. And I'm not being too careful um, with this application because it's just the first application of paint it's just to help me um, set up the light so get the tones for all the objects and the tones are how dark they are and how light they are depending on where the, the light hits it so the direction of the light is coming in my painting from right to left because my window is on the right of the orange and the jug so most of the light will fall on the right side of the orange and the jug and you'll notice that I'm not covering up the lines that I've drawn in order that I have a guide to follow of the shape of the jug and the orange. Of course, how much of the lines remain is entirely up to yourself at this point. 
and you can paint and repaint as often as you like. So don't worry if you feel you've made a mistake. You can always let your paint dry and correct it. At this stage, we're simply blocking in areas of colour. So now I'm ready to start painting in um, my main objects, the subject of my still life. And I'll start with the orange. And to mix up the orange, I'm mixing the colours red and yellow. And the colours that I'm using are part of a pack that come as a set, um, a basic set. You get nine colours, including your white. Um, and I'm simply using those for this painting today. And they are aqua oil paints that are water soluble. So you get a nice thick creamy oil paint texture um, but it's water soluble which is a lot better for cleaning brushes and clothing should you spill any. Um, but of course you feel free to use watercolour or acrylic or whatever paint you prefer. So using the orange colour that I've mixed up I am paying attention when I'm painting the orange to the shape of the orange to the colour that I'm mixing and the direction of light that's hitting the orange so where the light and shadow is and the direction of light in my case is coming from right to left so the, the shadow is underneath my orange to the left and I'm using a blue green for the shadow to give my orange colour a bit of a brightness and a pop to it to stop it looking dull the main primary colours, just to speak a little bit about colour, are yellow, red and blue and you'll get them in any pack. And yellow and red mixed together give you orange, red and blue give you purple and blue and yellow give you green. And I might talk about opposite colours. So the opposite colour of yellow is purple, the opposite colour of red is green and the opposite colour of blue is orange. And the reason that I mention that is it's quite nice to use these opposite or contrasting colours um, in your shadows um, because it just makes the main colour of your object brighter. So for example, my orange um, colour, I'm, I'm using blues, um, greens in the shadows just to make my orange brighter. If I was using um, yellow, I might use blue to make my shadows. If it was a red apple, I might make my shadows with a bit of green. And it just makes the colours a bit brighter. So I've mixed in to get the darker colours of my orange, a little bit more red, perhaps a little bit of brown or ochre. And where I want it to be brighter, I am using some uh, more white in my orange mix, my red and my yellow, and maybe um, a bit of cadmium yellow uh, just for brightness. Now I'm going to start to paint the main object of my picture, which is my... Um, jug and I'm using a soft flexible um, medium small rounded brush and this is going to help me when I want to paint the curves I'm going to use pressure on the brush to move the bristles in the brush head around the shape of the curves so that the brush draws the curves for me um, rather than me attempting to use the very tip of the brush um, to get my line. I'll be using the um, full length of the bristles to move around curved shapes and I use my um, pinky finger to give my fingers balance when I'm holding the brush just to give a bit stability and um, I use the length of the bristles to flow around curves so you can see that the 
bristles themselves are moving rather than me attempting just to use the very tip of the brush. So I'm using more of the side of the brush. And I've just mixed up a basic green, um, a mid-tone, not too dark, not too light, um, to block in the basic shape of my jug from my original drawing. And I'm using my original painted line as a guide for this. And when I'm painting this, um, I am having a think about the direction of light. So now I'm mixing some light green. So I'm just adding some white to my um, basic mid-tone there um, to plot in the areas where most of the light is hitting my jug. And as the light's coming from the window to the right, most of the highlights are on the right hand side. However, there will be some reflected light around the left of the jug, um, but not nearly as, as bright or as much as on the right hand side. And I'm working over the whole jug um, at the one time. And so now I've mixed up a darker uh, green and to do this I have added some more uh, blue um, and maybe a little bit of ochre to my green um, to fill in the darker areas where there's more shade um, on my jug and I'm painting across in stripes um, because my jug has um, a rippled surface um, but you can experiment with how you um, paint different surfaces um, as you get more experienced. And I'm adding a mid-tone again, a lighter mid-tone, to block in just the rest of the jug um, to try and um, paint over the background shape. Um, and this will enable me to read the light and dark more easily than if I had more exposed unpainted canvas. And I'm not too worried about the shape at this point because um, if I paint over something that I want to keep, I can always um, add another layer of paint and paint it back in. So I'm not bothered that my jug has gone slightly over my orange there because um, I can correct that. And it's always worth remembering to clean your brushes well between mixing colours because if you don't clean your brush well, your colours can become muddy and by muddy I mean a little bit brown. Um, so clean, clean off your brushes. Now I'm adding a contrast colour shadow um, using some um, redder tones uh, underneath the left of my jug and I'm adding just a tiny slick of that underneath my orange um, to give some depth because the green and the red in contrast with each other in the shadow um, give a bit of depth. And a little slick of the red tone at the top of the ellipse of the jug um, to indicate shadow. And again, the green and the red are contrasting, so the colours look brighter. Now I'm going to consider painting in the um, 
background again around the jug and the orange, just correcting the light and colour values now that I've paid some attention to the light and colour values on the subject of my painting, which is the jug and the orange. So I'm switching brushes, I'm using um, a slightly stiffer, uh, medium flat, uh, straight edged brush. Um, and this is because I'm going to be uh, blocking in a bigger area and um, I'm going to be painting straight lines and I always find it easier to paint straight lines um, with a straight edged brush. Um, but of course that's absolutely your preference on what brushes you use. Um, and the thickness of my paint again is a creamy thickness so it's not so runny it's going to um, run off the canvas um, but it's not so thick that it won't spread so it's a nice um, creamy consistency. And I'm just blocking in areas on the sill and the window frame and the wall where most light is um, catching the surface. And this is where our underpainting um, that we did uh, in the beginning provides um, a help to us um, when we add this second layer because we've already got something on the canvas, it's not just bare canvas. Um, although there's nothing wrong with having bare exposed canvas in your painting if, if that's what you, you choose to do. And you can uh, blend as much uh, of the light as you like or you can go as I am for a more uh, graphic and designed form of shadow. Um, it's entirely up to you. At this point it's really um, subjective so it's 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 really how you want your painting to look you can blend your shadows so that um the change from light to dark is barely perceptible or you can make it really graphic um, and obvious as I'm doing. Um, it really just depends on how you want your painting to look and don't be disheartened if you've started a painting and you think this isn't how I wanted this painting to look. You can always just finish the one you're working on and start another one. So now I'm going to continue um, with my painting considering the tonal values of the lighter shadows around my highlights that I've painted in white um, and lighter colour and around my um, main objects on the windowsill and the window frame and the wall around. So I'm mixing up um, a medium grey colour and I'm again using my flat brush and if your colour, if you dab it onto your canvas and you think no that's too dark or too light, um, just keep your brush loaded uh, with the existing paint and add in a little lighter whites or um, light ochres or darks. Um, as, as the case requires. So in this instance I've added um, s some more white and light blue to my grey mix um, and to mix up grey you just need to use blue and brown uh, and white. You might want to add a bit of purple in or a bit of red. It's entirely up to yourself um, to get that grey tone. And I'm filling in around my jug, um, right up to and over my original drawn line. Because that drawn line, um, I don't need anymore because I already know the shape of my jug having painted in the green of the body of the jug itself. So I can remove that line and just concentrate on the shadow now. And you might want to carry some of the um, lighter shadow into the darker areas just to blend and it gives you a mid-tone then that you might want to carry across your painting. Um, this would be one of the instances where you maybe wouldn't w uh, wash your brush uh, between mixings um, just to enable you to blend between your colours a bit more if that's your intention. because you can always 
repaint over as I'm doing now uh, with a sharper, fresher slick of the original um, colour just to keep the colour bright and the tonal values correct. And you can always add in a drawn line as I was doing there whenever you uh, feel like it just to emphasise a curve or a straight line. It's entirely up to you how you want your painting to look. So I'm adding another layer of shadow in the foreground. Um, and this gives me the opportunity to blend if I wish and also to add some of the colour tone of the the colour value rather of the orange or the jug so if I want to ha have a little bit of reflected green light from the jug onto the windowsill or a little bit of reflected orange I could add that in to this layer of paint And all the time that I'm painting, I'm flicking my eyes to my uh, subject and keeping an eye on shape when I'm painting, when using my brush, guiding my brush around shape and thinking about colour and the value of the light. So I'm adding a little bit of um, orange into the windowsill. and a little bit of green into my grey shadow and s tiny little bits of orange onto the jug where um, the light has been reflected from the orange back onto the jug. And again, you can make your shadows as defined in shape as you would like or as blended. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you. Um, at this point in the painting, I'm now considering what's outside my window. Um, over the course of painting this still life, um, I've gone from afternoon light into evening, so I've had to switch on a lamp, which has made some changes to my highlights, but not so much that it's going to really affect my painting. So I'm keeping bashing on, but it might be something to consider that when you're setting up a still life, you might want to uh, continue painting it at the same time of day over a number of um, successive days so that you get the light conditions um, replicated um, as closely as possible so that the light doesn't change um, as you paint your painting. It's entirely up to you how you do it. But for me, for this painting, it, it was not so great a consideration because I was nearly finished so I can continue on. So now that I have applied a couple of layers of paint to my little painting, um, I feel that I am coming to the, the end of the painting. So I'm not going to make any huge uh, drastic changes at this point. I am simply going to look over the whole surface and decide where I might want to make little changes. Um, so make a bit darker, make something a bit lighter, maybe pop on some highlights of reflected light. Maybe just do a little bit of drawing into some shape or a little bit of shadow here and there. Really, this is the stage of the painting where um, I am just tying up any loose ends and doing the finishing off. And this can be difficult to, to recognise when you're at that point, but I think it's 
it, with practice you'll get to realize that when you want to start making really drastic changes um, and, and really what what you need is not to make really drastic changes per se to this little painting but perhaps to start a completely new one but of course that's your call it's entirely up to you it may be that you do do something drastic and and change um a color value or a shadow or or how you've drawn it it's entirely up to you but um it's quite interesting to restrain yourself when you're learning um, painting um, from doing that and instead build up a little portfolio of your progression through painting so sticking with your mistakes and starting another painting and correcting them in the next painting um, and seeing your progression so having made the decision that this is my painting for good or ill all I need to do now is sign it so I mix up a thinner layer of paint um, more akin to ink, use a small pointed brush and pick a contrasting colour and that's my finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to share your ideas, comments and creations. Don't forget to click the like button, share and subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified of any future uploads and follow us on our Gorgie Collective social media. Thanks for watching.